Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I welcome you to this new week. Now, we're in a few days to the month of June. Um, this month ends tomorrow. And I want to use this opportunity to invite you to our monthly fasting and prayer meeting that holds on the first of the month. And we fast for the whole day. And actually, literally, we fast for like 24 hours and pray according to the watches. So we are going to be having prayer meetings at every watch from 12 midnight tomorrow. So I want to use this opportunity to invite you. I think the link will be on your screen and save it, copy it, because these meetings are going to be holding via Zoom. And um, people all over different nations of the world join us for this meeting. So I want to invite you, invite someone also to join. And this month, this, this, for the month of June, it's going to be a special one because the Spirit of God is going to be releasing a lot. There are things He's laid in my heart already concerning the month of June. So I really, really want to invite you, not just you, and by extension, everybody that is connected to you, invite them for this meeting. Create time for those prayer meetings. We pray at each watch for about 40 minutes or thereabouts. So create time for this and the Lord will surely bless you. Praise God. Can we call for that daily bread? It's a new week. So I have great expectations and we are expecting great testimonies. Can we begin to pray? Join me right now as we make this declaration and demand. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. Every angel responsible for this, they are bringing it to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, don't just think these things. I keep telling you this. As we declare it, open your mouth and declare. There is something about speaking. Not just, oh, I know what I mean. I know God is hearing my heart. Hey, God sees your heart, but the angels don't see your heart. The angels wait for your sound. God sees your heart. The angels don't see your heart. They don't hear your heart. They wait for your sound. Praise God. You need to understand that that is why we speak. I've told you before, we say with our hearts, but then we must speak. And when we begin to speak exactly what we are saying, then we are ready for the supernatural life. Praise God. So, so anytime we make these declarations, don't just say it in your mind, okay, I'm, no, 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 open your mouth and say it. The moment you say it, because of what the Lord gave this word, I'm telling you this, because the Lord gave this word, what it simply means that he has instructed the angels, because that's how God works and that's how the angels work. God has instructed the angels that when you hear them say this demand, then go to action. Yeah. So you're there listening, maybe in your car driving to work, or maybe you just woke up and you're trying to get ready for work, and there are angels there with you. Everybody born of God have angels that are with them. The Bible says we are, we've come to an innumerable company of angels. So some angels that are even around you, you don't know them, they don't know you, but by virtue of your location, angels are there. They may not be directly sent to you, but you see, because God has the, given this command that we make these demands, every time we make them, the angels around, they hear. And they, they oh, there was a command God gave concerning this. Oh, it's time to get to work. And thank you for those of you sending in your testimonies of how God has been meeting your needs. And let me tell you something, you are going to experience this, this in greater measure. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Now let's go into today's uh, message. Turn your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 1. Now we are still dealing with the spirits of prophecy. We're still dealing with the spirit of prophecy, that spirit resting upon you. Praise God. So turn your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 1. Now we dwelt last week on, on this. And I'm taking you, we're going deeper into um, what the Spirit of God have laid in our hearts. In, to, for in my heart to share with you. Ephesians chapter 1, now verse 18. He says, I'm reading, look, let me read the King James. Or let me read the, the Amplified. Let me just go straight to the Amplified because I've read it before. It says, first, verse 18, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18. It says, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. Having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, so that you can understand the hope of the hope to which he has called you, and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints set apart works. Now, this is where we're going to. And I want you to follow me carefully. So I'm going to read verse 18, the, the, the first part of verse 18, into verse 19. So, so look at it this way because I, I want to bring out something here. It says, By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, so that you can understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe. Now let me read this from the King James Version. Now he says, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll take the first part in verse 18 and join it to the first part in verse 19. So it's going to read this way. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe. So now Paul is praying this prayer. We're talking about the spirit of prophecy. So we're talking about the spirit of prophecy resting on you. Now, when he rests on you, I've been sharing with you for weeks now on the things that enhance the, the walking of the spirit of prophecy in your life. And we've been dwelling on the Lord opening the eyes of your understanding. So now, now look at this. The eyes of your understanding be flooded with light so that you will come to know you will come to understand what is the exceeding greatness. You know, thank you, Holy Spirit. There is a power that I've been released, that I've been given. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That you will know the exceeding greatness you, that you will know how powerful, that you will know how strong this power is that have been directed towards you. So what power is he talking about? You know, Jesus said, Adi, Nikepo. Jesus said it in talking to the disciples in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. He says, hey guys, listen. Don't be bothered about some of these things. Because they were asking, would you at this time deliver the kingdom? Because Jesus was about leaving. So like, okay, wait. Would you at this time deliver the kingdom to, now it's the physical nation of Israel. And Jesus said, hey, it is not for you to know the time and the seasons that the Father has put in his power. But then he said something. But you are going 
to receive. Now, for you to receive, it means, first of all, it was given to you. Say that now. It was first given to you before you can receive it. You cannot receive what is not given to you. You get that right? Now he says, and Jesus said, you shall receive power after the, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Okay. Now here, Paul is saying that you will come to understand the greatness of this power. So when I received the Holy Ghost, now, now when did I receive the Holy Ghost? When you got saved, that was when you received the Holy Ghost. Yes. Some people don't understand this. Sometimes, you know, it has not been taught right in, by, by many people. You know, like you have to, some people say you have to get born again first. And after you've gotten born again, now you have to desire the, 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 the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then with the evidence of speaking in tongues, brothers and sisters, the Holy Ghost is the one that got you born again. If the Holy Ghost didn't come, there was no way you could have been saved. He is the one that saved you. It was his coming that breathed salvation in your heart. You see that? Now, because of wrong teachings, people don't know that the same day you got born again, you could have actually spoken in tongues. See, why? Because the Holy Ghost has already come. Now, if he didn't come, you didn't get saved. Salvation is not because of what you said. That's not salvation. Anybody can say anything. It doesn't mean God will accept the person. Salvation is the full work of the Holy Ghost. So we come by our confession. Now, when our hearts are sincere and he receives our words when we pray. Now, first and foremost, he said, no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, he didn't say no man can speak that Jesus is Lord. He said, no man can say. I told you before, we say with our heart. So when, when that dawning comes on you, so you know, it may be at the altar call where you step out. Now, of course, you should know by now, it's not everybody that goes out for the altar call that gets saved, even though they all follow the preacher to say what the preacher said. You see, I mean, speaking now, praise God. Now, but then he, he, he said, when you stand there, it could be in front of the altar, it could be at home, it could be while you're driving. You know, it just dawns on you. Maybe you're listening to a message while you're driving and then it just dawns on you that Jesus is Lord. So why haven't I given my heart to him? See that now? Now, what happened to you? That realization came by the Holy Ghost. It came by the Holy Ghost. Now, when that begins to come, when that begins to come, now some of you even watching me right now, you know you're not really, really saved. But you see, you've been feeling that promptings in your heart. It's time to get saved. It's time to turn a new leaf. It's time to live for Jesus. You've been receiving that nudging. Do you know what's going on? There is a power that has been directed towards you. And that power, He's been hitting on you. He's been knocking your heart, the door of your heart. He's been knocking the door of your heart. But see, you haven't received him yet. You haven't received him yet. But he's there. You know, you're, you're doing stuff and it suddenly just comes on you that, hey, you know this life is over, right? And then you start telling yourself that, yes, I, I know I'm supposed to live for Jesus. I know I'm supposed to be born again. But Kai, but the, just this one thing, just this one. Hey, how do you how do you think that thing is coming? God loves you and he has released the Holy Spirit. He has released that Holy Spirit into your life. He has re released him already. He's released. So the Holy Ghost is there. He wants to come in. Now he needs your permission to come in. You know that? Yes, he does. He needs your permission to come in. So he's knocking, he's knocking, he's knocking, he's knocking. But Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come. Now, when you open your heart to the Holy Ghost to come, now you, you might be there thinking, 
I, I, I want to live for Jesus, but you know, I, I have a lot of baggages. I don't know if Jesus will accept me. Oh, I think I need to stop this thing first before I now fully come and serve Jesus. Oh, I think I need to do. Now you are thinking all those thoughts, but I tell you this truth, the day or moment you just open your heart to receive the Holy Ghost, the day you tell and that day can be now. I don't even know what you were waiting for after this minute. Praise God. That day can be now and should be now. And, and you just said, Lord, I don't know how this is going to work, but I receive your spirit into my heart. Guess what happens to you? There is a power that comes right into you at that moment. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, this power changes everything. It changes everything. It's so strong, it can purge your conscience from every dead thoughts and dead works. It's so powerful, it can heal you instantly. It's so powerful, it can turn things around in your life. Praise God. So I don't know what you're waiting for if you have not received this yet. Let me pray for you if you are willing, because our time is up right now. Join me. And you're going to see the manifestation of that power right now. If you have not been living right for Jesus, it means you have not received that power. Because, see, you cannot live right by your own. There is a power that causes us to do what is right. So right now, if you open your heart and open your mouth and pray with me, you will see the manifestation of that power. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus. I'm tired of struggling by myself. Right now, I receive your spirit into my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, let the power of the Holy Ghost fill these ones now. Thank you, Jesus. And let them begin to manifest the life of Christ in every way in jesus name amen listen step out today and have a wonderful day god bless you bye